Welcome to this week's episode of Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science for Wednesday, November 14th, 2013. We begin with an update from the world of technology that Nikola Tesla himself would be proud of. Some glorious bastards over at Duke University have developed a relatively simple technology for the capture of energy from radio waves and similar frequencies. It is essentially the same as a solar panel in concept, but instead of capturing energy from photons in the visible and near-visible spectrum, it uses much longer wavelengths. Radio, cell phone signals, Wi-Fi, and even satellites all produce frequencies within this range. And those signals are goddamn everywhere. The Duke researchers used an advanced metamaterial made from fiberglass and copper to energy conductors, then formed that into basic circuits that could capture this form of energy. Initial tests resulted in between 6 and 10 percent efficiency, but they have been able to get that up to 37 percent, which is comparable to some of the best solar panels being developed. Obviously, there could be more efficient ways to transfer power wirelessly, but the point is that this technology uses energy that's already there. They believe this could be developed into cell phone chargers that run off Wi-Fi and phone signals, or similar applications in small electronics. Already, it can produce 7.3 volts of energy, which is greater than a conventional USB charger. And it is based off of relatively cheap materials, meaning that the potential applications for harvesting this kind of energy are nearly endless. The researchers are very encouraged by their initial results and plan to develop the technology further. Next is news from the world of material science as it applies to medicine. Scientists from the University of Iowa have developed a new material that can help regenerate bones. It's basically on a scaffold of good old-fashioned collagen, but then things get pretty crazy. Throughout this collagen are nanoparticles that are wrapped in DNA. The DNA is for the coating of a growth factor that promotes a bone formation. This growth factor protein could be supplied directly, but then it would require multiple doses to actually repair damage. Using DNA-wrapped nanoparticles provides the instructions directly to the cells so that they can create their own growth factor. Obviously, the bone-forming cells already have this gene, they just aren't expressing it. So getting them to produce the protein requires introducing the gene externally as a plasmid, which is a small ring of DNA. The nanoparticles are simply the delivery method, and they give the molecule a positive charge, making it easier for cells to take up. They tested this material on small holes in the skulls of mice. The collagen and nanoparticle combination grew 44 times as much bone and soft tissue as just collagen alone, and was capable of completely sealing the 5mm by 2mm holes. While this is essentially a gene therapy, it avoids certain immune system complications by not using a viral vector. With more development, the scientists hope that this material can be used to help repair bones and even replace certain sections of jaw within dental applications. Well, hope you enjoyed this episode. Hopefully we get some comments this week. Do you have any ideas for an invention? Let us know your thoughts on that and all the stories in the comments.